we're going to talk about web to print my uh, headline for this one is do your customers demand web to print because that is a question that we need to ask how many here thinks that a customer actually is asking for web to print one two three so uh, I'm just I'm just asking this question if if I'm a brand owner or a, a buyer of print I would I would actually guess that my key element for uh, going into a website to buy print is not because it's a web to print solution it's because I need a printed product and if we forget that sometimes in our uh, way of uh, communicating with um, uh, with uh, ourselves when we make the decisions on buying a web to print solution or being a web to print supplier that actually puts a lot of effort and difference because if we think that it's important to have a system that can do the web to print maybe we forget that the angle of the nozzle maybe should be different right i totally acknowledge that there's a lot a lot of customers that in their uh, are in their bits and tenders uh, demand a web to print I think that a lot of public customers, governmental customers, they uh, like or have like a demand that there should be uh, a web to print solution. But why is it? I think that to some extent this is because everybody thinks that self-service is cheaper, right? You can order any time of the day, but web to print is merely just a platform. So it doesn't really necessarily mean that it has to be cheap because it's online. But we have, in our mindset, we have started to recognize that web to print is equal to cheap but that is maybe not maybe not the case and another thing that we also have to speculate about if we are going into this area are we still a printing company or are we becoming an IT company because the people that works in our companies I mean we used to have pre-press people and printers and maybe designers and you know project managers and things like that but in the future if you are Maybe you should have customer service that ask, how do I integrate my web to print solution with your purchasing system? Or as, uh, for example, LaserTrick has done, as you know, uh, how can we create a white label solution? I mean, is that like typical challenges that we see in our no normal printing companies? I don't think so. So that will require a new mindset on, on what kind of people we employ. And it will also require a new mindset for um, uh, where we are taking our companies in the future. I will come in, into this in a little bit later also in this presentation here. And uh, the agenda today is we're going to talk about customers, market, competitors, interfaces, products and production and prices. So who are the customers and how do they buy? Some of the consumers, some of the customers, they are Mr. and Mrs. Jones. They are the ones that buy photo mocks, t-shirts, photo books, all these kind of things that, that are typically one-offs, typically something that has been seen as a product that is uh, like the German Siva. Some are young, some are old, and uh, some are experienced and some are, is unexperienced and some has never tried web to print before. And in Japanese, actually some also <laughs> ask for jobs in other languages. And uh, some are professionals and some are not. So, the question that you should ask when we talk about the customers, this is not conclusive, there's a, probably a lot of other types uh, of customers, but just with these few examples, I guess that most can see that it's difficult to actually think that you should be able to make one web to print solution that can cover all the customer types that you're trying to reach for. So that means that you can have different uh, interfaces, how you actually interact with your customers. If you are a professional purchaser, maybe your interface is different from being Mr. and Mrs. Jones or what you have to consider if you start up a web to print solution, um, are you selling it only locally or are you selling globally? <laughs> uh, those kind of things is something that we need to ask ourselves if we go into this uh, business area. And how they buy, <clears throat> before we go into how they buy online, let's say that, okay, we have a request for quotation, I guess this is something that most of us can recognize, then we have a clarification, was the offer right, or the, did you understand the, the, the RFQ, then we make an offer, the offer will probably be compared by somebody, 
and then it hopefully turns into order. Then we have some files, then we have a proof, then we have shipping, then we have invoice, then we have payment. I guess that most of us can recognize that this is a typical kind of flow in an order process in, an, in a company like uh, most printing companies. If it's an online, pay attention to this one. Very, very often it starts with a payment because the customer have already selected the product. They have already made a decision about what paper, what size, what colors, whatever. Whatever you put on your website, they have already made that decision. So it starts with pay, a payment. So then it's an order, files, online proofing, and shipping. So the processes in this one is much easier. Uh, I think that if you are from uh, Southern Europe or Arab-speaking countries, then you are very used to barging about your products, right? I think that one of the advantages, will, which is also a disadvantage, and I will touch upon that in a moment, is that if you see something online, you find it maybe attractive price-wise, you buy it. If you don't like it, you find another website with a similar product, and then you buy it there. But what I'm trying to clarify here is the processes from when you have made a decision and you have found your... Because the, the thing here is that the, the reason why we, why we consider web to print uh, buying online cheaper than we do it from uh, offline is also because of the process. In this, in this uh, flow here, there's actually a lot of process, a lot of people involved in it. it. People cost money, right? Processes cost money. And actually, when you pay, m most printing companies actually deliver on an invoice. So you also have a financing credit risk, which you also have to take into consideration. So just the fact that you don't have to take that credit risk into consideration can make this product cheaper or make your profit higher, right? I mean, I'm just trying to give some ideas to think about. And this is not conclusive. It's Everybody can buy a web to print solution for three, four hundred dollars a month, but that, that doesn't in itself doesn't make you successful. Uh, there's a lot of other things like the marketing thing, as you mentioned, and a lot of other things as well. The markets, I, the market is a. You can you can define the markets in, in a lot of different ways. I have defined three different market segments that I find interesting to talk to, which as far as I can see, cover pretty much all the kind of web-to-print solutions we know. Business-to-consumer, um, Vistaprint is an example, right? Business-to-business, Via um, Markendruck um, is an example for that. Uh, service market, uh, Stolforce, they get a lot of data inside electronically. Uh, is it a, a web-to-print solution? No, it's not considered as a web-to-print solution, but it, it is a transactional kind of distribution of data that turns out to something in print. So I guess that this actually in many ways cover a lot of the different uh, ways of doing things. Let's talk a little bit about the competitors. I think one of the biggest threats to your own competition is yourself. Because when I started asking, are you a printing company or are you an IT company? Uh, to make a decision turning yourself and your own business from being a typical printer to be a typical online printer or to be typical something else is in my opinion quite a challenge which is something that that really takes a lot of consideration you also have to ask yourself when you when you talk about web to print do you do it because you want to increase your revenue and your profit or do you do it because the machinery is not used enough if you, have, if, if you have the first uh, agenda, then it really doesn't matter where it's printed because it's just a matter of making profit on what you sell, right? But if you are only there because you have a, an offset print, uh, printing press that is not <laughs> used enough, then the approach might be different. And, and I'm not saying that anything is right or wrong in this, in this one. I'm just trying to explain that you have to make up for your own mind how you want to work on yourself and that is that is a challenge we have uh, my company we have been uh, giving a lot of uh, uh, helping people about requirements for uh, buying web to print solutions and and the first thing is the owner says we i know my company good enough i can make a description of what i need and then they start working on it and they forgot maybe they get snow blind I guess, I guess that all of us get snow blind, that when we are looking too much at our own business and the longer time we've been there, we see the obvious things, we forget to see the things that maybe in a relation to this kind of work is truly important. 
Of course, also other online printers are uh, competitive to you because I think that one of the things that we like and we don't like is that the prices online is very transparent. I guess that um, I can tell you how it's in Denmark. It's like uh, for years, I would estimate that 50, 60, 70 percent of all printers, they don't calculate their prices anymore. They just go to lasertrip.dk and take the price they have and hope they can produce it cheaper themselves. Isn't that crazy? So uh, the transparency of, especially on commodity products, uh, makes uh, it very, very uh, difficult because you need to think about the volume you need in order to print cheap, because everybody can print cheap if they want to. And then I've, I found a great word, the non-line printers. I don't even know if it's spelled correctly, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't really matter. Uh, the thing about non-line printers or offline printers is basically that the more commoditized products become, the higher value the specialized products have. So if you are, if you're looking at it from a competitive perspective, let's say that, uh, for example, you have a printer here in, in Sweden, Gothenburg uh, printer, you uh, the board took it. I don't know them, but I know that they have a record. Uh, uh, they are recognized as very good. They are have won several prizes for being one of the best printers in Sweden. And uh, some of the work I've seen is just beauty. Can you imagine what happened to their brand, to their product, if they started to sell white label solution from Lasertrick? I'm not, I'm not talking uh, against Lasertrick's white label solution, and I'm not talking against commodity products. I'm just saying that, that for non-line printers, you cannot mix those things. Because it will, for the consumers, it will be, I mean, it's like going into, it going into a Bentley car, car shop and then they have on the side they have a second-hand Fiat from 1974 there. It would be like kind of a strange uh, situation to actually experience I guess. And then um, then I have I couldn't find one word for it so it actually continues somewhere out here. Uh, so it's companies who don't see print as a product. Can you imagine what that is? Uh, that is for example, I was, I'm, I'll show you in a second. Yeah. But that is basically, you know, companies that produce. Uh, two years ago here at Graphcom IO, uh, there was a, a startup company that was actually selling maps. So you could, what you went into the website, and then you entered uh, your address, and then it, you could choose from different styles of a map, and then they were printed and sent to you, so you could put it on your wall. They they didn't consider themselves as a printing company. Uh, they are not a printing company, but they sell a lot of print. So, so sometimes we are competing because we can, I mean, all of us can produce anything. I'm not saying that we can produce everything cheap or uh, profitable or anything like that, but everybody who has a printing machine and a bindery can print anything. Do you agree on that one? So <clears throat> that leads me to the interfaces. Um, and I, I don't hope you think this is boring. I'm just trying to give you a, my thoughts and my considerations about this. See, we have, most of us, when we talk about web to print, we talk about World Wide Web or WWW, and then we have WWW whatever print, right? This is, this, I guess this is where most printers are looking into actually about web to print. I also know that both in Sweden and Norway and, uh, uh, yes, Sweden and Norway, there's developers of web to print solutions. And I guess that most of them are focus, focusing on this one because this is where you, you see a Vista print, you like the idea that you get millions of customers like this, <laughs> then you buy this one, right? Because this is the, the very, very visible understanding of what web to print is. But there's also a new market. Uh, a lot of people is talking about uh, the, uh, how the mobile phone, the smartphone is actually the driver of a lot of different businesses. I mean, all of us, we have a smartphone. And I don't know if you uh, consider this, but sometimes when I take my, my phone, I just say that, okay, I use it as a calendar. I use it as a web browser. I use it as a mail program. I use it as a, uh, whatever application I use. And it's just amazing you, because you have a small computer, but because the screen is small, you can either use a website on it, but a lot of us is, is downloading apps and some of the apps are also interfaces for how to sell print because what is print? 
print is, I mean, essentially it's a lot of photos or pictures and a lot of uh, text basically, right? And in, the, in this time we are living right now with Instagram and social media, a lot of our communication is visual. So, I mean, if you have, I don't know about your phone, I think that my phone carries around 17,000 photos or even more. So if I want to make a greeting card for, for my mom or whatever, I just click, click, click. Boom. Then I have, a, I have a file. I don't need, need a design. I don't need anything like that. So the apps is actually, a, in my opinion, a very important way also to interface with the customers. And then we have the APIs. Do you know the APIs? Um, the APIs is, so here we connect with people. The APIs connect with computers. And um, I, I would like to show you something here. So I just go to, if I'm able to do that. Um, this is a, is a website called Programmable Web. And uh, Programmable Web, it has a list of uh, APIs that are related to print. So this is basically uh, either companies that only provide the APIs or printing companies that provide interfacing directly into their workflow systems. So rather than buying a web to print solution that is ready-made, you can actually consider to actually develop something where you don't need a printing machine, you don't need a, spe a specific web to print solution, you just need just <laughs> need a programmer that is able to take the API and turn it into a business where you can fac facilitate print in many different ways. And uh, some of them are very, uh, very, very capable. For example, uh, uh, Amazon Prime uh, is a huge, huge, huge printing company. Uh, they have a long list of APIs that can actually integrate into various kinds of the value chain. Another very, very big player in this uh, market is uh, Simpress Vistaprint. I think they have more than 200 APIs for their services. So if you want to make a if you want to make an app for uh, sharing photos or printing photos, you can do that without buying a specific thing. You can buy something uh, and you can use the services for free. And I'd sell quotation for free because the free part of this is basically that uh, they sell print. So they have a margin on the print, but they sell the print cheaper than many of us is able to produce because they have an enormous volume. And that is... Uh, that is something that is uh, pretty uh, uh, fantastic, basically. Let's take a look at some of the WWWs. This is Saxoprint. You know Saxoprint? You know that it was owned by Siva, the photo book, uh, the Europe's biggest photo book creator. Uh, this company or this family of companies, they turn over 600 million euros a year in print. You know Hello Print? <coughs> no, Hello Print is uh, from uh, from uh, Holland. It's in family with online printers. You know anybody else that is family with online printers? A laser trick in Scandinavia for one. Uh, they have an incredible uh, pace of working right now, and the reason why I'm I'm showcasing these two is because um, Saxo Print. I thought it was funny, maybe I, don't, maybe I don't get it, but hello, don't print. <laughs> because this is a printing company, this is a broker. So, so the, these two types of company for the, for the customers, they will be, be perceived the same way. They sell print, uh, they are focusing a lot on commodity products. So if you're looking for letterheads, business cards, leaflets, folders, brochures, I mean the simple kind of stuff that is like typically uh, you have unbranded paper stocks, you have, uh, 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 you, you have different service levels on delivery time, so you can decide, okay, do I, do I want the really cheap one and maybe wait eight days for it, or I do I want the overnight thing. For example, online printers in Germany, they have for most of the print, print product, whatever volume you, they, they, you're asking for, they actually deliver within the same day in Germany when you order which is just crazy. How many in Sweden deliver the same day? If, I'm not talking about 100 business cards around the coffee shop, but I'm talking about maybe 15,000 catalogs from day to day. 
different uh, apps. These guys, are they a printing company? Is this? I mean, do you know them? You know that one, right? Yeah. Basically, they have made an app. Take some photos. This is my son's. And then uh, I should have trimmed it. Pick a frame. Pretty easy. Access to all my photos. And what they actually do with this one is that they have on a uh, on-demand uh, postcard production that actually print this product, put a posters on it, and deliver it to my mom. I think I put my mom on it. <laughs> so uh, this is just an example, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reason why uh, Postnor is doing this. It's not because they are a printing company. They might not even print this in themselves. Maybe they have an app where they have an API connecting to some printers that they work with, who prints this and put all of them in the post box and make sure that it's shipped out. And um, the price for postcard, uh, including uh, postage, is 19 Danish kroner. If I go to a tourist shop in Denmark and buy a nice uh, postcard, I would guess that it would cost around 19, 20 kroner without stamp, right? So this is just like business model that either we have to connect with them in order to make sure that we can print their products, or we have to use the same kind of service because we can turn it around uh, and use that as well. Uh, Printtech uh, is a French company. <clears throat> I like them a lot. Actually, it's a stupid, simple product. I'm sorry that the resolution is not so good here on the screen, but. They have made a simple small box, and that box has, I think it's like eight by 10 or something like that. And then you just pick 50 photos of your library, click, and then you get a little, little nice pre-made box with the 50 print in it. And you pay, I think it's about 18 euro you pay for that, including shipping, right? And, and, and you may think, yeah, <laughs> just imagine if you have eight by 10, let's say that you have a B2 sheet digital, I am not, I'm not checked, but in my opinion, it's probably one sheet they put in it, right? So one sheet, trim it, put it in a box, send it out. How much does one sheet cost? Does it cost less than a euro? I guarantee that's less than a euro, right? So they have a margin that is, I guess, much higher than if we were selling in the old times, we were selling an entire process of business cards and a lot of processes and you know, the APIs, uh, I just found two, there's hundreds of them. The interesting part of this one uh, uh, called kite.ly, that is owned by Canon. So why is Canon interested in having a API and web to print uh, integration? I guess that Canon's major revenue is click-based. Of course, they like to sell machines, but I guess that a lot of you guys working in digital print like to get volumes and clicks. So if they can, give customers and uh, developers an easy access to this kind of services. I guess that Canon can actually gain revenue by making sure that their customers make more money on, on these kind of things. And I just wanted to show you these kind of things because remember when we started, I was asking, are you here because you want to fill up your own machine or are you here because you want to make money and sell products and services? And if you want to sell a lot of print sometimes developing an API and go and interface with a lot of these new startups and other printing companies, maybe it's more interesting. Maybe the, the return of investment is, is much higher. I'm not sure. Then you have like the products. I, I, I promised to tell you what kind of products. You can see that you can decide for yourself. web to print is not, it doesn't have to be commodity product. You can sell anything online if you are good enough with the interface use interface, right? So um, you have to decide, do you want to sell commodity products? If you want to sell commodity products, you are in a highly competitive market and you are communicating and talking and selling to a lot of people that are really not loyal to you. They will buy anything that is as cheap as possible. If you have specialized products, let's say Moo, you know Moo with the business cards or Elegante Press from Lithuania making uh, sales of letterpress products or Siva, who is doing photo books, versus Print24, online printers, Fly Alarm, and many, many, many more selling commodity products. Different business models. 
Some of the terms that you need to get used to is automation, ganging, marginal cost rather than full cost, which is a terrible problem if you're buying a new uh, printing press because we are used to, to do the absor absorption cost for it. Something like drop shipping. You know what drop shipping is? We have orders that buy some people that buy something from you and ask it to be delivered neutral to somebody else. You can't imagine how difficult that is for many printers. <laughs> it is really difficult for them. API, just spoke a little bit about it. You need to take that in consideration. Mergers and acquisitions is uh, the new agenda for things. Because you may also start up having a web to print solution, being an online printer, because you have decided basically to sell your company so you have an exit strategy rather than having a, an operational strategy. The democratization of prices, uh, you know what that means? That means that the prices are lower, 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 reaching a marginal uh, price. Let me show you how difficult that is. In America, they are so fortunate now to have a company called Free Prints. They offer every customer that registered 1,000 free photo prints a month for free, only pay for shipping. Uh, a couple of months ago, they uh, introduced now free photo books. So uh, you get one photo book a month for free, only pay for shipping. And I think the shipping price for the photo book was $7.99 in, in uh, dollars in US. And uh, do they do it because they are advertising driven? No. They do it because they have so large volume, so the shipping cost they have is marginal to whatever they sell. So they make the profit actually on the surplus of the, of the shipping cost. So uh, that is something that really uh, make a lot of changes in our industry. Uh, and as I always uh, end my presentations, of course, should find a lot of inspiration. Uh, uh, we have been working with, with both Ola and, and Ulf and, and Magnus, but also the Grafiske Fertogne. Uh, I'm often referring to a very, very brilliant presentation they did. So uh, that is good. We have also more than 10 films on English TV about uh, web to print where different suppliers are talking about their service and offerings. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.